Brisbane Yamaha nose boat. Hi, I'm Aaron, the owner of Brisbane Yamaha. I've got something special for you today. You're looking for a tinny, you're a crabber, people smuggler. Have a look at this thing. Not a lot of people have seen them. We sell a lot. And here in Queensland, out in Moreton Bay, there's heaps of professional crabbers that use it. Quintrex 600 Fish Seeker. Open tinny. Look at the size of it. And this is the Brisbane Yamaha Special. Come and have a look at this. First up, it comes on one of the aluminium trailers, a 2,000 kilo trailer. Yeah, it's a six metre boat with the blade hull. Have a good look at that hull, because this makes the difference between all those other big tinnies that bang and carry on. This is the real deal. And it's a good boat. What we do at Brisbane Yamaha, there's a couple of things we do special. One is we put the Minn Kota bracket on. We weld that on, make it all beautiful, because uh, you know, Everything's better with a Minn Kota. That's just it. You know, you sit out there, don't anchor, move around. You come off the fish, just move it over with your hand controls. The other thing we do, come and have a look at this, Dan. We have the whole top decks all solidly welded. Doesn't make a difference if you don't. I just think it looks cleaner, the water runs off. They're an unpainted boat. We also inside put a little front casting deck, which is the new model. Now what that does is just give you storage, get rid of all that safety gear, some fish and tackle and things. Now come back and have a look, Dan, because this is the biggest tinny that you could buy. Years ago, there used to be a whole heap of tinnies that Alleycraft did. But Alleycraft went out of business, whatever they did. And this really is the biggest open tinny that you can buy in Australia. Now it's maxed out to a 90, 90 Yamaha. The pro fishermen buy one, they put a center console. We don't do that, it's a tiller. Now this is for your hardcore crabber. You're out fishing, camping. Gee, I tell you what, the guy that bought this, Tom, he knows what he's doing, right? He takes his family, they go up north, they're up in the creeks. And if you're worried about one of those crocodiles getting you, yeah, lizard coming and jumping in, they put all their swags inside the boat and we'll quickly get up there. Now, I've done a measure, it's six metres long. It's 1,900 across and 2.3 and a little bit. But the freeboard is something. Because everyone says, oh, an opportunity like this, big freeboard, nothing can jump in. And what we've got there is 685, 680. You're not going to fall out of that and nothing's going to jump in it. Come round to this 90 tiller. Big solid cleats, you know. Look at that, you could hook that onto a helicopter and winch it on, or maybe you could put it on a big mothership and have them as dories. 90 Yamaha, like I said, maximum. Have a little splash well at the back, two batteries, isolation switch, well there's one battery. Tom wants to put his other one, uh, one of his own in there because he's got heaps. Fuel filter, you can see that, fuel separating filter. Pump, you'll never have to do it. Yamaha's famous tiller handle, it's big. Down here, switch panel that we cut in, all waterproof, USB. Some of the options you'll see on this boat, the side pockets are options, the solid stitching on the side. Now you've got a good storage up here. You get a lot in there. I'm not saying I'd get in there, but gee, Dan would be able to get in there. If he cut his legs off, he'd fit for sure. Up the front, a couple of, couple of batteries for the Minn Kota. It's an 80 pound, it's gonna hold it. You can see the breakaway, all easy, all sprayed, it's not gonna corrode. Another great cleat up the front you could tie on or if you're doing that helicopter thing, sit up here and fish. You can see here, have a look at the plate. You know, six people. Six people could camp in this thing. Max of 90, so that's good. But it's huge. Sit back here. And what we do is we have a little friction plate on the back here so you can move your motor around, lock it off, you know, just there. Tighten it up so you don't get prop blast when, you, when you're squirting along. Prop torque. So it goes along. Good Minn Kota, a good Garmin sounder on a ram bracket. I love these ram brackets because you can turn them around. You can see them at any angle. You might be up the front fishing, turn it around. Your mates can see it. There's a lot of room in here. How long? Just Dan, do me a favour. I've lost my tape measure. 
just take that end up there to the seat. Let's just see how much you've got. This to the front. Show where it is. And you've got, you've got 2.7 metres in there. It's bloody huge. Let's get on the water. So here we are in the Caboolture River in the Quintrek 600 Fish Seeker. Now, I met an old mate, Ross. Ross was at the boat ramp. He said, he listened to me do the intro. He said, that was bloody awesome. And I said to him, why don't you come on it? And he said, oh, I don't mind if I do. Say hello, Ross. Hello, how are you? <laughs> Good. Oh, Put it into gear. Now, what you know is Yamaha's famous for their tiller handle. It's a long ergonomic, you've got kill switch, stop and start, forward and reverse, and you've got the idle up and down here on the arm, right, for slow trawling. So we wanted to slow trawl, but Ross said, I don't want to slow trawl. Show me what this little baby does, Aaron. So are you ready, Dan? We've got a new drone. Hang on there, Ross. And I'll tell you what it does. It gets on the plane straight away. Now, straight away it's up and it's flat. It's belting along, I haven't used any trim. There's another, I'm in 4.2, because Tom said, I don't care if you to use me boat, but don't scratch it. Now, there's a boat coming, I'll go across this way. Hang on there, Ross. And let's see what this little six metre does. Well, you wouldn't know. Hang on there, don't let me flip you out, because I've done that before. Now. I can tell you, 90, which is maximum horsepower, is absolutely heaps. You can get a ray, we've sold lots with 60s and 70s. A little bit of trim on it. I'm getting along at, well, it looks like 30 knots there. Let's see how this thing turns. So it turns sharp. It'll probably turn in its, in its length. And I don't wanna... Let's have a look. Back to this mud, this pot over here. I'm not going to pull it out. I can tell you now, what I hate more than anything are people that steal your mud crab. Check in it, do anything. And normally what they say is, oh, someone stole my mud crab, so I'm going to steal theirs. Well, just don't, all right? Now I'll come up here, up over the side. I'd hook that pot up, pull him up here. You could come over. It's stable. We've got two in there. Up the front here, if you're casting lures, pulling something up, offshore. This is an awesome, awesome, massive tinny. You know, have a look at the size of where Ross is and I am. Then you're back, your mate's phoned you, he's on the fish. Knock him into gear, hanging on Ross. And we're off. Now, hang on there, Dan. Turns quite nice. Well, it turns very nice. It's a six metre boat, you know, so I'm not going to throw it into some sort of crazy turn, but hopefully that drone can see. That steers, stops. So I'll give it a little bit of trim. Oh, that's nice. We're doing 24 knots. Tell you what, we'll just creep along here like you would, having a look for some spots, the sandbar out there, I know it drops off. All the old boys fish for, fish for brim and whiting. You'll get tailor in here, and at night you'll catch a lot of dewies come out of this waterway. You know, I do a lot of fishing here, I have over my life. Wonderful, wonderful place. All of you Victorians and New South Walesmen, Tell you what, just sell up your houses and move up here. Because <coughs> we're in winter. We're in the end of July and it is beautiful. Oh, come round here, look. <coughs> we'll do a turn, Ross. Doesn't cavitate. And then you give it a bit of go and it's just off. Then I'll give it out. You've got to test this. Tom, I'm just having a look what it's doing. Yeah, that's 30 knots. <coughs> Coffin. 
never got over that bloody Rona. Over here, have a look at that. We're in five metres of water. You know, it's low tide. You can see the cranes, herons or something over there. There's a couple of shags. Sneak into one of these little river mouths, cast out, you'd catch some flathead in there for sure. Now, then what we could do is we could idle him down. Listen to that motor just knocking down. Do you hear that? Just for slow trawling, because flathead like it's slow, just beating along, you know? Look at that. Look how slow I can go. One, oh, I could go slower than that. I'll trawl him down. One, 99.9.5. We're really going walking pace. You could, you could use this 90 and you could trawl for trout, right? This Yamaha really are at another level. You know, compare it to anyone else, you'll end up with Yamaha. And compare this big tinny with anything else in the market. But what do you reckon, Ross? Brilliant, I reckon. Brilliant. Yeah. Ross reckons it's brilliant. His wife reckons I was nuts for bringing him out here. But he loves the waterways and so do I. Let's scoot over there. I'll knock it into reverse and we'll show you just... Listen to that 90 or listen to the 90 not doing anything. Brilliant. Brilliant. Put it up here. Knock it into gear. Point, 1.3. Point Increase the revs. Look at that. It's a game changer, these tiller handles. For all you people that like trawling. 2.4. 2 2.8. 3. So basically I can go from nearly half, and it's still going up to about three and a half knots, just on the trawl function. The thing about this boat, and Dan's gonna put some specs up, and he'll put a big sign up, five mil hull. Three mil sides, five mil hull, on a tinny. Ideal for running into rocks, if you go to Baffle, Baffle Creek, this would be, you'd be the king of Baffle Creek in this thing. And I tell you, if you want a tinny, if you wanna come out like Ross, come in the best boats in Australia. Call the team at Brisbane Yamaha, 3888-1727. And I hope I see you on the water in a big Quintrex. Bye. And you have to let the boat drift back and then think about where your lines are gonna go back. Yeah. And four in here, look at the fish on that. Oh. Look at there. Hey. Have a look at that, right? So they're fish, they're probably just brim. Right, but they're yeah, stacked yeah. up high. So you can see you can see those fish. And so and you can see here, structure is where what fish go to. So you've got to find, look at that. Oh, heaps of fish. And they're all sitting on that drop off there. Right? There's probably a rock in here and they'll all sit around the rock. And so then what you've got to do is anchor or use the Minn Kota and just throw a bait or yeah. throw a plastic out and then let it sit. Everyone with a plastic, the biggest problem is they jank it, whack it away too quick. No. You're more than likely catch the fish on the drop rather than on the up. Yeah. And that's, yeah. I always find that you give him about two minutes or three minutes and then wheel it in after that. Right. That's yeah, that's what you find? Good on you. That's what I think. I don't believe how, you know. How what? How quick it is off the mark. No, well. I wanted to see, I haven't been in with one with a 90. I've been in them with a 70 and they're, they're okay. Yeah. But the 90, it's, it's got a lot. And you need to see this here, this is a friction plate. And what yeah. that does is because the prop's spinning, it wants to turn the boat. But because of that friction plate, it's very easy to use on the handle. That man in front, he bought a boat off us too. And then he thought we were gonna run into him because he's got his new boat. He's probably going to get a shock when he goes, oh, you're that bloke, I bought it off. <laughs> the guy that bought this was going to buy a 460 Renegade, right? Which is about 40 Gs with all the gear on it. And he bought this instead. Right, so the fish seeker, really, we should sell a lot more. We sell about 12 a year, 
we probably should sell 30 or 40 of them because a lot of people, this is what they're looking for for that sort of accommodation. You know, this size, look at it. I'd put the kids down, I'd put a couple of waterproof bean bags in here. Bloody awesome. I heard you on that ramp yeah. say that you could put a mattress down here and sleep on it. Easy, look at that. Yeah, I know. Oh, well, I'm six foot four and I said it's two seven. Yeah. You could, my, yeah. kid, my kids would fi my kids would fish across it. Oh yeah. Now the thing with one, a big tinny like this, what you might think is, as I'm sitting down, you can't see over the front. That's why a lot of people put an extender on it and they stand up to be able to get a better view. Because it is, you know, it's a, it's a six metre boat. But yeah, it's, got, it's pretty, it's not too bad, this. I'll be honest with you. I don't drive a lot of tiller steers anymore. I have done. Give me life is all I could afford to tell the truth. So we'll put it on the wall. We'll put it on the boat rear, on the trailer. And it's a full drive on trailer, like you'd expect with a six metre boat. And I just come in, I line it up and you need a bit of confidence. Trust me, Tom, trust me. And I just move that tiller steer, guide it into the way, make sure I trim it up. And I'll just rev it. And Cody will tell me when I'm there. And then I'll hold it on. And I know all you American people will say that I'm chewing out the boat ramp. We're in Australia here. Our boat ramps are awesome. Have you been to America? Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know the... I might, I might take you on all my tests. I like you. Hey, on the, on the uh, Statue of Liberty. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. That's in. Um, New York. Yeah, is it New York? Yeah. Yeah. And have you seen that? Yeah. What's it like? It's it's uh, big and it was made by the French, and there's lots of people there and it's a little bit dodgy inside. Yeah? Yeah, when you're walking around, but it's okay. <laughs> America's a beautiful country. Yeah? Yeah, very beautiful.